Okay, so one question I've been getting a lot uh, from faculty is what is the best way to prepare for the fall? And it's a difficult question because every course is different. Every course has different parameters. You have different students. We tend to think of courses, they're actually this uh, intersection of uh, a teacher, students, right, in the content. And, and to the extent the students or the content is different, um, it means that you're going to have a different optimal class, right? But that being said, uh, this is my personal view on how I would approach the fall, uh, given what we know, given the parameters that we're looking uh, at at the fall. First, let me talk about the way that uh, people are thinking about approaching the fall that, that I I think is is the wrong way, right? The, 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 the conception a lot of people have is you have a face-to-face -face class, right? And you're going to have to do something called high flex, right? And I just use high flex here, not necessarily as the method, right? Not as the method, but as the, um, you know, as, as a sort of universe of concerns, right? Uh, you're, you are, no matter what, you're going to have to serve those in-class students, right? You're going to have to serve some students that are connecting synchronously online and just unavoidably, you're going to have to serve some students that are connecting asynchronously because they cannot make it to the Zoom sessions or uh, to the synchronous class, right? These are the, you know, and you're going to have to serve them simultaneously, right? And we are going to get to high flex, right? We are going to get to high flex, but I think this idea that we're moving from a face to face class to high flex is, is probably the wrong way to approach it. Here, here's what I mean by that. So again, this is the perception. You've got this face-to-face -face presentation. The students do a bunch of stuff before. They come to the face-to-face -face presentation. Uh, that you have a class discussion. Maybe you do presentation, discussion, kind of have a rhythm to the class, right? Um, a little bit of presentation, a little bit of discussion. Maybe you do active learning in there. And the question faculty often ask themselves is how do I take this face-to-face -face class and how do I include these other populations, right? And it, it seems like a natural way to approach the question, right? But this conversion raises immediate questions. How are you going to watch both the class in Zoom at the same time? Isn't it going to be overwhelming? How can asynchronous students have equivalent activities to what is going on in the classroom? You have a face-to-face -face classroom where they're doing face-to-face -face activities. How, how, how is it possible that a student connecting hours later is going to have an equivalent activity? Um, what happens if we go back into lockdown? How, how are you going to uh, adapt to that if suddenly the face-to-face -face class is gone because we go we slide back into phase two uh, uh, from phase three or something like that right and I think a lot of the questions come because we, we're approaching this with the wrong question people are asking how do we create a face-to-face -face class and this is the wrong question I want to be clear I think this is the wrong question again personal view but I think this is the wrong question People are asking, how do we create a face-to-face -face class while including an online audience, right? How do we create a face-to-face -face class, and then how do we add these other audiences we have to add, right? I don't think that's right. Uh, I think it's wrong because it approaches the problem from the wrong end. For this fall, the question I want to ask is, how can we create an online experience that we can include face-to-face -face students in? and asynchronous students in, right? How, how do we create the online experience and bring the face-to-face -face students into that online experience? So what do, what do I mean by this, right? So, you know, high flex, and again, we'll get there. I'm not saying don't do high flex. In fact, we are going to get to high flex, but we're going to get there for, through a different process, right? So uh, instead of going from the face-to-face -face class and then figuring out how we're going to high flex it, we're going to start with the Zoom presentation. We're going to build a class around Zoom presentations, synchronous online, um, and then we're going to add asynchronous to it. And then eventually we'll get to the face-to-face -face students. And uh, we'll call this, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, um, uh, the Zoom presentation that also serves asynchronous students, we're calling that Zoom Flex, okay? So how, do, how does this work? Step one, we design the Zoom experience. I'll show you one model here. This doesn't have to be your model, but this is a model that uh, I've run uh, many, many times, uh, and, it's, and it's worked, right? And, and actually, it's not a new model. Um, I've been running 
uh, different synchronous learning experiences like this for a long time. Uh, so you have a Zoom presentation or back in the day, you have a Skype presentation or you have a Blackboard Collaborate or whatever, right? Microsoft Teams, right? Um, you send people into breakouts, right? You do your presentation, you present the content, you send people into breakouts, but while they're in the breakouts, they're working on Google Docs in their rooms, right? And the, the document has some questions they have to work on together. And maybe those are questions that go deeper into the content you just uh, uh, presented. Maybe they're questions that ask them about the content. Maybe it's like a little mini quiz that they have to work together on, right? And so they're all working on that. And while you're while they're in their breakouts, you can actually look at that one document. They're all in the same document. You can look at that one document and you can see, okay, how are, how are the different groups doing? You can see them typing, right? You can see the groups that haven't started. You can see the groups that have started. You can jump into the groups that need a little more assistance, right? And you can jump in saying, hey, I, I just noticed you hadn't started. What, what do you need to start, right? You kind of you can look at all the groups at once, right? So it, it's a really useful technique in Zoom, right? Presentation, breakouts, have people work in a collaborative document that you can look at, and then you can determine whether the groups need any intervention on your part, rather than just sort of teleporting from group uh, to group. Now, when the students come back, uh, you have this Zoom discussion, but what you're doing, if you see these arrows back and forth, right? If you see these arrows back and forth between Google Docs, in the Zoom discussion, you're using that Google Doc as your roadmap to the discussion. So rather than just saying, hey, let's talk, who has a, who has a response? Anybody have any thoughts? You look at the doc and you say, hey, Jane, I noticed that uh, you mentioned that you think this is an example of the concept we talked about last week of um, um, the oxygen of amplification. Uh, can you talk about why you think that's an example and in, in some of the thoughts your groups had group had on that? So you can say, Pedro, uh, your group mentioned that some of you had had personal experience with this. Uh, could you or someone from your group um, uh, share uh, some of the personal experiences that you, you had had with this issue, right? And so you use that Google Doc to sort of orchestrate, to conduct it, and it works well in a Zoom format because um, you know, in Zoom, it's, it's kind of hard to jump into the conversation, right? The, the latency, the, the way the unmuting, it doesn't have a flow, right? Uh, and so a lot of people don't get heard. A lot of people don't get heard in Zoom rooms, right? Um, so uh, you use this Google Doc and you're going out there and you're pulling together the conversation. You're making the connections and everybody gets a chance to talk. And it's actually a much more democratic way of approaching it. So that's, that's our Zoom engagement. Right. That's our our Zoom class engagement. Right now. Uh, and then you go and you do quizzes or, or whatever. Right. So the first flex that we're going to do is we're going to add an asynchronous option. And the way we're going to do this is uh, the asynchronous learners. Right. Watch the Zoom presentation. And at some point you say, now, please move to the breakout doc. And you say asynchronous learners, I would like you to move to the breakout doc as well. And since you already have that breakout doc, right? They can jump into the breakout doc and they can add, they can answer their questions, right? You've built this pedagogy that is sort of natively digital. So your asynchronous digital learners can just engage with the same Google doc, right? They can look at the other answers, see what they have to add, right? Um, and uh, and uh, engage uh, in the same way as, as your class did. Now, when they come to the point where there's generally a Zoom discussion, the Zoom presentation is recorded, right? So at that point in the Zoom presentation, what you can do is you can upload that Zoom presentation to something called VoiceThread. Uh, we have uh, accounts uh, here, professional accounts at uh, WSU. And at the point you want them to join that bigger Zoom discussion and say, hey, what did you think about while you were looking at the Zoom document, they can re respond with a recorded video at that point in the video. VoiceThread is like a video annotation tool, right? You can uh, uh, do a video response to a particular point in a video. And so they can fire up their camera and they can talk and they'll give their response to this, right? They'll give their response based on that engagement they had uh, with the breakout doc. And then everything else works more or less like that. All right, so here's the point. Adding asynchronous was natural here because asynchronous is already digital, right? Asynchronous is already digital. It was based around that Google Doc, right? A digital artifact. We have a Zoom presentation, which is recorded. 
which we can then use VoiceThread to annotate, right? So adding the asynchronous was natural in that case, much more natural than starting with a face-to-face -face course and asking, how do we have an asynchronous option? It's almost the case here that adding the asynchronous, apart from having the uploaded to VoiceThread, it didn't really add any work at all from, from, from doing the Zoom session, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move from Zoom Flex, right? Which is uh, synchronous online plus asynchronous. And now we're gonna add face-to-face. -face. And to keep this diagram simple, I'm gonna remove the asynchronous and quizzes, just sort of simplify the diagram. So the Zoom presentation, the difference here is you do it up in front of the classroom, but you're still broadcasting to Zoom, right? Same presentation. Now, when you go into the breakout rooms, your class engages with the document too, right? And so they're working on the document. Now, if if this six foot distancing allows your class to actually have conversations, I'm not sure it will, but if it allows them to have conversations in the classroom, then they're talking, right? They're talking from six feet apart and they're working on their document from six feet apart, right? Um, if it doesn't, here's the beauty of it. They're in a document. They can do, they're in a Google Doc. They can do comments, right? They can, they can uh, chat each other about various things that they're adding, right? They have a digital way in the classroom to do that collaborative work because it's already natively digital. Now, the best part is this. I, I, I consistently hear, like, how am I going to balance the two groups? How am I going to balance the two groups? I have people on Zoom. I have people in the class. I'm going to be giving attention to the people in the class, and the people in Zoom are going to be left out. And so, so this, is, this is the big concern, and it's a really big concern. There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than watching a class at a distance and feeling like you are an afterthought, right? But because you built this, because you built this, with the Zoom, right, with the synchronous online at the core, it's, not, it, it's gonna be inclusive for everyone, and I'll show you why. Uh, when you come back, you have a Google Doc, and it has, the people in your class have responded to it, and the people in the Zoom breakouts have responded to it, and you're gonna just do the same thing you would do in the Zoom session, but some of the people will be in class. You'll say, Pedro, uh, you know, I hear that it, your, your group said that they had some personal experience with this. Could you share? Now, maybe Pedro is in the class. Maybe he is in uh, the Zoom uh, uh, session, right? It won't matter. You'll just go through the different groups and some of them will be in the class and some of them will be uh, online and you'll reach out to the different students and some of them will be, on be in, in the physical class and some of them will be online. Um, and it will be seamless, right? It will be seamless. Everybody will feel included uh, in, their own, uh, in their own way, right? So adding face-to-face -face in this class was seamless because we integrated face-to-face -face students into the online synchronous methods. Instead of trying to integrate online students, right, online synchronous students into the face-to-face -face class, we, we worked the other way. And it radically simplified uh, the task uh, at hand. Uh, so I'm running this thing called Blended Content Studio. I got to pitch it, right? So Blended Content Studio, uh, we're going to help if you join the Blended Content Studio workshop over the next six weeks, we're going to help you build asynchronous materials, right? That's primarily what we're going to do, but we're also going to demonstrate to you how to teach in this Zoom Flex way and eventually how to flex it, right, to incorporate your face-to-face -face students. And we're going to do that through a simple process. The first thing is we're going to teach you to produce videos and intros and prompts, right, video intros and prompts that connect with your students, right? course intros that say, hey, I'm excited that you're here, that you're just going to record on your phone, right? Um, uh, discussion prompts that aren't just you typing, but discussion prompts that are you maybe sitting out in your backyard and you say to your students, hey, I'd love you to answer this question I've been thinking a lot about, you know, answer it in this discussion forum. We're going to help you produce these video intros in these prompts that connect with the students and increase your teaching presence. We're going to help you create explanatory video and audio, right? So, uh, stuff that the students can watch on their own time that explains concepts, uh, things like I just did right now, things like you're watching now, a, a, a PowerPoint that explains a concept, right? And we're going to show you how to do that effectively in ways that are engaging for students and in ways that are going to reduce the amount of stuff that you're going to have to do in the class sessions because you're, essentially it's a blended scenario, right? You're going to be able to do some of the stuff that you normally do in a class session with recorded stuff. That's going to take some of the weight and the pressure off the class session. 
And finally, we're going to show you Zoom based engagement strategies that can flex both ways, right? And so we're going to show you how to make that Zoom core that engages the students, right, in activities. And then we're going to show you how you can flex it, how you can flex it to the asynchronous and how you can flex it to the synchronous, right? Um, we summarize this process as connect, explain, engage. It's the three things that you're going to learn to do using video, uh, using audio, using synchronous online uh, with your students. Connect, right? Connect with them, increase your teaching presence, learn how to explain using some of this asynchronous material and engage them in synchronous online sessions that can serve a face-to-face -face population as well as an asynchronous population. And um, yeah, and so you'll move from Zoom Flex, right? You create all these readings, uh, not create, but you find readings, you'll maybe uh, find YouTube videos the students can watch. You create multimedia of your own. Uh, you'll have a Zoom presentation. Uh, and then uh, you'll initially create a Zoom Flex model where students can do this asynchronously as well. And um, eventually you'll add, you'll add the face-to-face -face, uh, piece in there. And again, it's not going to be simple. There's going to be work involved here because you're going to be creating the Zoom Flex, but it's going to be a lot easier than if you start with the face-to-face. -face. And the fact that we're teaching you to make some of these uh, video pieces of your own are also going to simplify what you need to do in class because you're actually going to be able to do a lot of this outside of a, a, a traditional uh, class as well. So thank you for watching this. Uh, I really hope that you'll join the Blended Content Studio uh, class. Uh, we have, even if you don't show up for the synchronous sessions that are on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, one at like, oh geez, I forget the times now, uh, but uh, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at different times, um, you can get just into the class and look at the materials we're building because we are building out a full suite of materials, a full suite of, of stuff that you can view asynchronously, right? Our class itself is a Zoom Flex structure. Uh, and so please, please sign up for it. And um, yeah, I hope to see you there. So that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> um, I, I really do hope to see you uh, in the workshop experience. Thanks.